Welcome. My name is Jesse and you are listening to The Wake Up Call. This show is about opening your eyes to how you've been living, bringing awareness to the standard you've been operating at, and helping you start living to your full potential. There are two ways I'll help you do this. One, by disciplining your mind, and two, by strengthening your body. It's time to take stock of your current performance and go to the next level. Let's do this. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of The Wake Up Call. Today's episode is going to be a lengthy one, and it's because this topic that I'm about to go into is of huge importance. Whether your goal is to improve your habits, change your mindset, improve your life, whether it be you know career, body composition, your relationships, what I am about to talk about with you today is hugely important to achieve success in all of those realms. And it really comes down to habits. As a personal trainer for over 10 years and coach, habits is something that I have to have a great deal of knowledge of. So when people come to work with me and they say, Jesse, I want to, you know, change my body, I want to, you know, regain control of my health and what have you. Fundamentally, it's going to come down to what actions that this person takes over a period of time. Okay. And it comes down to your behavior and your behavior is driven by certain actions and habits and routines. So basically, it's the it's the culmination of what you do on a frequent basis. Okay, so it's never going to be a one off occurrence or standalone action. It's it's what you do on a weekly and daily basis. All right. So I want to talk about what drives habits and how to change your behavior. Okay. Nobody is perfect. I'm not perfect. There are things that I work on on a daily and weekly basis to try and get better. I am constantly trying to find ways to improve myself, which really comes down to the Kaizen principle, which is constant learning and improvement. There is always something that I can improve and get better at. So it's not to say I'm unhappy. I'm very happy, but I'm not satisfied. I'm always trying to think, okay, how can I improve in this area? Even when I'm doing my own training, I think rep to rep, can I improve that? Can I can I do better than the last rep? Okay, that's basically that's the depth that I go into when I when I look at the areas that I want to improve. So for you listening, if you have habits that you wish to change, you actually need to first understand habits themselves. And this is from a theoretical standpoint. I'm not talking about reading, you know, a single article that maybe popped up in your newsfeed, or maybe you've read a quote and you thought, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, that's really catchy, that sounds great. And then you think, oh, I understand habits. Well, you don't, if I'm being brutally honest. Okay, that's what's, uh, it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect, is where you see one piece of information, a snippet of a really large or a deep topic, and you think, I understand it completely, when really you don't. You've just scratched the surface. So when it comes to habits, you must understand how they are formed, what drives them, So that way you can actually affect the change that you're looking for. So that's what I mean by a theoretical standpoint. You actually need to understand the habit loop. So there is a sequence that happens. Most of the time it's unconscious. You're not going to be aware of this, especially starting out if you don't understand why you do what you do and how habits are formed and the sequence in which you do things. It comes down to the following, and I think I discussed this a couple episodes ago, but I'm going to go through it. This is called the habit loop, and this is a um, this is the way habits are formed. I'm just going to go through it. I'm going to cover it uh, briefly, but if you're looking for more information, I would highly encourage you to go and read the book Atomic Habits and also The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. But this is the habit loop. There is a cue. So you see something, you hear something, there is a stimulus, there is some form of input that you receive. From that input, you get a craving. Okay, so it doesn't have to be just about food. You might get a an urge to, maybe you're cold and you need you get a, a craving that you need to feel warm. Okay, let's say it's maybe putting on a jacket, so your body sends, you know, a signal to your body and you start perhaps shivering. You then get a craving that, I'm cold, I would prefer to be hot. So then your response to that sensation is, to layer up. So maybe you go and grab a hoodie or you grab an extra a jacket or something to put on. And your reward 
for doing that is you are no longer cold. So it goes cue, craving, response, reward. That is the habit loop, okay? And if you don't understand that concept, you will always struggle to identify and understand fundamentally why you do what you do. Because if you wanna change something, you need to understand the processes that take place. So for, for the majority of things you do every day, you're on autopilot. You've done, you've done tasks and routines and actions so many times in a row that it becomes unconscious. You don't have to think about it. You just do it. You've done this action so many times on a consistent basis. You don't need the mental willpower or the you know mental real estate to think about the process. You just do it, okay? Because your your brain has created this connection, this this neuron, uh, this pathway that it's just what you do. You get the cue, you know. There's a, re, a response, there's a craving. You get the reward, okay? I hope that makes sense so far. But I want to break it down to you in simple terms. It's like doing maths, okay? You have to understand the concepts of addition and subtraction at a fundamental level, okay? Because if you don't, if you do not understand how to add and subtract, you will not get any smarter and you won't become any better at maths. Now, you're probably thinking, Jesse, why on earth do I need to understand that? I've got a calculator in my pocket. I've got a smartphone that can, you know, add and subtract any, anything I want at any point in time. That's awesome, fantastic. But if you don't actually understand how it works, you know, if you don't understand that 10 plus 10 equals 20, something's wrong. But also, you're not gonna understand why it equals 20, okay? So if you think that understanding the concept of mathematics has nothing to do with your goal, you'd be wrong, you're wrong. Because in life, when you want to achieve a certain goal, outcome, or achievement, this is how it works. A plus B equals C. Achieving your desired outcome or goal that you have in mind comes back down to this equation. Outcomes, goals, are driven by actions and behaviors. It's what you do. It's not what you think about. It's not what you say you're going to do. It actually comes down to what you do. The end product comes from you actually putting in the reps or taking a specific action. Okay? Hence, our discussion on today's topic. And this is where, if you've already read the title of this episode, you might be thinking, what does that mathematical equation mean? Well, this is what it means. Behavior is a function of the person in their environment. That's what that equation means. B equals F, and then in brackets, P comma E. Behavior is a function of the person in their environment. This means, in order for you to change or improve your behavior, so by behavior I mean a specific action or decision or choice that you have to make, you have two options. Number one, you can either change the person, so you, you change yourself, or number two, you can change the environment. And out of those two options, you might be thinking, Changing me, changing you as a person, whew, that sounds like uh, definitely the harder of the two choices. And it can be, depending on how you think about this concept. Lasting change does take time, yes. So if you currently have a certain persona or if you have an identity of yourself and you want to change over time, yes. That will take time to change and adapt and develop into the person that you want to be. But what doesn't take a lot of time is a shift in mindset or perspective. And one of the examples I'm gonna give you is the word good. This is something that I learned several years ago and it has really come in, it's, it's helped me in a lot of different scenarios. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples here and this is from a, a conversation I had with a, a friend of mine on uh, Instagram just this week. Um, I reckon you guys get a bit of a kick about it out of listening to it. But what it means is that when something doesn't go your way, when maybe a decision goes against you or somebody does something that upsets you or there's a negative, what you perceive to be a negative outcome, 
the response is good. And these are some examples I'm gonna talk you through here. I spoke to a friend of mine on Instagram and he says, uh, this is a couple of days ago, he's like, the gym up at work is closed. Good, there's a perfectly good chin up bar at the oval uh, plus body weight work. So, you know, the gym was uh, shut at work. He didn't dwell on it, he didn't, you know, have a pity party or moan about it. He's like, good, it's a perfectly good chin up bar at the oval, plus he can do some body weight work, fantastic. And I said, you're just getting on with it. He's like, I'm not here to fuck around. So th this man understands the concept of flip the script, find a solution, get on with it, move forward. And then uh, just today, actually, he sends me a message. He's like, 3 a.m. workout. Yes, that's right. 3 a.m. workout. No kettlebells. Good. Usual equipment not, not there at the Oval. Adapted and got it done. This, my friends, is a clear change in self. So this is a clear change in perspective. He hasn't changed himself fundamentally. He's the same person he was three minutes ago before he knew that the equipment wasn't there or that the gym was closed. He's the same person, but he's just flipped the script and thought, okay, I don't have access to what I'd normally do. Good. How do I fix it? How do I make an improvement? How can I just get on with it and find a solution? You understand? So this is where you can view difficulty as either a positive or a negative. And understand this, it is a choice. That's where the, the word good comes from. And it's in capitals. G-O-O-D, good. Another example. This week we've been in uh, lockdown, so I haven't been able to do in-person coaching sessions, which has had its own challenges, but uh, we've got on with it. We've got the job done. I've created sessions based upon the equipment that uh, my clients had at their disposal. We've been using all sorts of equipment. 10 liter bottles of water, 15 liter tub of water that goes in a, in a cooler. We've been using 24 liter kitty litter bags. We've been using pavers, we've been using backpacks, using light dumbbells, bands, broomsticks. Anyway, we've just been, that's what we've been using because there's a problem, good. Find a solution, get on with it. But I had a session uh, this morning with a client on Zoom, online, and uh, I explained to her that, I said to her, I don't, I didn't explain it in these words, but I explained to her that she couldn't take a drink. She couldn't have her rest break until exercise B of our superset had been completed. So if you're unsure of what a superset is, a superset is where you have two exercises back to back without rest. Exercise A is first, exercise B is second. You go A, B, rest. C is the proverbial rest station. So you don't stop, you don't chillax, you don't put your feet up and grab your drink of water until exercise B has been completed. But I explained it to her like this. I said to her, look, this is why I've incorporated this and this is how it's gonna benefit you. I said, look, it's gonna do two things. By you having a drink after you've done exercise B, it's, you're going to increase your work capacity. So your level of fitness and conditioning is going to go up because we're shortening the rest period between exercises. So it's like running. If you want to, you know, if you run the same distance every time, your body adapts and gets used to it. You, therefore, you don't get better. But if we've got two exercises back to back, I'm condensing the work. It's increasing density. We're getting more work done in less time. So that's going to increase work capacity. The second benefit is that there's going to be a higher calorie burn. So energy expenditure is going to go up. And this is because the heart rate is staying elevated for a longer period of time but it's also going to surpass the level that it would have been if she took that rest in between exercises. So the initial thought upon hearing that explanation of no, you can't have a drink, you could initially think, oh, this sucks. My personal trainer's not letting me even have a drink of water. What a dick, what an asshole. You can think that if you choose to. Again, it is a choice, but upon hearing those benefits, we can now flip the script and say, hmm, I actually don't want my drink. I can forego my drink for another minute or two, and I'm going to, I'm willing to, I want to, because I'm gonna get better results by doing exercise B before I have my rest. So 
So for me, as, as a coach of this person, knowing this person's goals and what it was and what it is that she's looking to achieve, I wanted to change a behavior to get a better result. So therefore, I changed the person. I didn't change the environment. The environment was the same. Same place, same equipment. The only thing that I changed was the mindset and the attitude. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Because everything was the same. The exercises were the same. The weights were the same. The sets and reps were the same. But she just now has a better understanding of why we're using that superset and how it's going to benefit her. I I wanted a change in behavior, therefore I changed the person. Not as a whole, but I changed and I addressed the mindset, an attitude. It's not to say she had a bad attitude at all, but I, I changed it to have a better effect on her end goal or result that she's chasing. That's how you change you. So that's our first scenario. The second scenario is about your environment. So let's say, if you know, for example, that you have a sweet tooth, and this sweet tooth is perhaps derailing your goals. Maybe it's knocking you into a calorie surplus. Maybe you're just getting way too much sugar and you know you need to do something about it. So maybe upon a review or a self-appraisal, you dig into your habits and your routines and your behaviors and you think, yeah, I've actually started to really chow down on some uh, ice cream. Basically at night, I get a little bit bored or I just want something to put in my mouth. So, you know, I just go to the freezer, grab some ice cream and I just get into it. In a scenario like that, again, you could still change the person, the attitude, the mindset. But another alternate, another option for you to look at is to change the environment. Get rid of the ice cream. If there's no ice cream in the house, you can't physically eat it. No matter how tempted you are, you could have the biggest craving for ice cream in the world. So you might subconsciously have that craving. So your initial action, based upon the habit loop we discussed earlier, your action, your response would be to get off the couch or get off wherever you're going, go to the freezer, open the lid, And then you would be shocked to find, oh no, there's no ice cream there. So how are you going to eat something that's no longer there? You can't. So this is an option for you. You can start to examine the areas that you spend the most time in. And you can ask yourself a binary binary question. Does this help or does this hinder me and my goals? So if we're looking at uh, what you do for work and... You know the environment that you are, uh, that you have at your disposal when you go into for, for work. You know maybe you got a staff or a break room. Are there temptations within there? You know is there, you know a big jar of sugar? Are there biscuits? Are there Tim Tams? Are there lollies? Look around. You know your temptations better than I do. Have a look around and scope out the situation. What are the things that you look at? or you smell perhaps, so some form of stimulus, some form of cue that you think, oh, I would like that. That looks good. Okay, and you're starting to identify what these things are. Maybe it's your fridge or your pantry. Have a look. Open them up. What do you crave? Just look at the items within the fridge and the pantry. And the freezer, absolutely, yes. What do you crave? Specifically, the foods and the items which will hinder your progress. What about on your way home from work? If you commute the same route, which most people do, if you commute the same route every single day, and maybe there's just something that you see and you think, hmm, I might go and check that out. What area, what location, what shop could possibly derail you. Maybe it's a big yellow M. Maybe it's a Hungry Jack's. Maybe it's a Nando's. Maybe it's a Boost Juice. Maybe it's a Muzz Buzz. I don't know. Again, you know your triggers. You know the things which make it harder for you to achieve your goals. 
So if you do constantly go the same route to and from work, and you find yourself pulling in to the McDonald's, to the KFC, to whatever it is, and it keeps derailing your progress, drive a different way home. Oh, Jesse, it might take me a bit longer to get home. And? And? What's wrong with that? If it helps you make a better decision, or if it means that you don't even have to make a decision, and you can remove that temptation from even being a question, part of the equation, is that not a win? You know, if if there was something that I saw every day and I had to exert my willpower and my discipline to say no, 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 no. I would rather find a different way where I didn't have to rely on that because there's gonna be a day or a night where you're driving and you've had a shit day or you've exhausted your mental strength and your mental muscles to the point where it's like, you could see anything and it'll just tip you over the edge. Be like, fuck it, I'm going in there. I'm going to McDonald's, I'm getting some fries. I'm gonna get a super shake. I'm gonna get a you know mocha frappa latte with four sugars or four shots of coffee or maybe both. You know your triggers. You know the things which are holding you back and slowing your progress down. So you wanna try and change your environment. Maybe it means changing the way you go to and from work. Maybe it means changing the time. Again, you have two options. You can change the environment. So if it's at home, for example, you can remove or eradicate what hinders your progress or your ability to make good choices. Number two is you don't visit the environment. So if you stay away from the break room or if you changed your direction that you go to or from work, you're not gonna be tempted to eat those things or give in to those those, uh, lapses in judgment or times where you're lacking willpower because you're not gonna have that input. You're not gonna have that stimulus. You're not gonna have that trigger. Now the next question, and it's probably on the tip of your tongue is, which one should you choose? Which option is the one that you should employ? My advice is this. It depends. And I know that doesn't sound initially quite, it doesn't sound very helpful. But what you have to do is ask yourself, what would you respond best to? If you know that you have no willpower, if you have no mental energy and strength to fight off the calling of the ice cream from the fridge that's saying, eat me, just six tablespoons, just 10 mouthfuls. If you can't say no to that voice inside, maybe you have to change the environment and remove that item or items from the house entirely. If it's more suitable to change the way that you drive home so you don't see a certain sign or have a certain smell that activates your taste buds, do that. It's a bit of trial and error. You've got, to, you've got to see what works for you. And this is the thing when it comes to habits. There's no hard and fast rule. There are principles of habit formation. You have to use that information, that mathematical equation, to insert yourself to that particular scenario. So this is what you can start to do, a bit of a takeaway, some action steps for you to implement. Pick one environment that you struggle with and lay out your options. Are you gonna change what you do? So are you going to change you or do you wanna change your environment? Those are your options, okay? The way you develop habits, any habits, good habits, bad habits, is by repetition. So some people think it takes time. Yes, it does take time, but more precisely, more specifically, it takes reps. The more frequently you do something, the quicker that habit gets ingrained. So good habits and bad habits, they work the same. The more frequently you do it, the stronger the habit becomes. So if you wanna develop good habits that work for you and your goals, you need to start getting wins on the board. Start stacking some wins, get some ticks no matter how small they could be. It it could be as simple as not having any sugar in your coffee. Maybe you're a a one, two or three sugar a day, uh, a sugar per coffee person. Maybe for you, a win would look like no coffee, uh, no sugar in the coffee, pardon me. That's a win. 
you could chalk that up and say, sweet, I'm one step closer to developing that habit of having no sugar in my coffee. So let, let's, let's, let's break it down like this. If you have one coffee per week, you only have one opportunity to develop the habit of no sugar in the coffee. It's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it just, that's, it just is. Let's say you have two coffees every single day. So you have 14 coffees across the week. You have 14, op- uh, 14 opportunities at improving that habit, positively or negatively, depending on the action and the behavior that you take. So in out of those two scenarios, which one's, which one's gonna develop the habit faster? Doing it once a week or doing it 14 times a week? So 14, more opportunities, more reps. So you can either get rid of all the sugar available to you in this example, or you can evaluate the effect that having this extra sugar is having on your health and your body composition. So maybe if you dig deep enough and you think, this sugar is just really not doing it for me. It's giving me no benefits. Yeah, sure, my my uh, my coffee tastes a bit sweeter, a bit nicer, but I'm sick of I'm sick of having the love handles. I'm sick of feeling shit afterwards. I'm ha- I'm sick of having the energy crash and then feeling like I need another coffee with more sugar to keep me going. You know, is having that extra sugar going to make it easier or harder for you to reach your goals? You know the answer, but that's the way that you change your outcomes. That is how you achieve your goals. Using that equation I laid out for you. Behavior is a function of the person in their environment. And you can use that equation. You can use that mathematical equation for any situation you find yourself in. You just have to take your time to identify what is B, what is the behavior. I'm doing this behavior because it is the person, you, so your state, in the environment. If you wanna change the behavior, it's going to either be changing your perspective, your attitude, your mindset, and or the environment you find yourself in, okay? So if you're not getting the result or results that you want, it's because the action does not line up with the goal that you have. It's like you've got a target and you're shooting off target. Little bit to the left, little bit to the right. Maybe it's too high, maybe it's too low. You're not hitting the target. So it either comes down to you and or your environment. So if you change that, then you can change the outcome that you're gonna get. So guys, I hope that's been helpful for you. This is something you can hear, hopefully, that I'm actually really passionate about. Understanding uh, the depth of psychology and what drives human behavior is it is critical to understanding yourself as an individual, but then also achieving the desired goal or outcome that you have in mind for your life, not just your health and fitness, but for your life. This is why some people, they go on and off the wagon for fucking years at a time. It's because they don't understand why they do what they do. They have absolutely no idea. Once you understand why you do what you do, you can then do something to actually affect change. So that's my hope for you, is that you will use that equation to get better outcomes. And if has, if this has struck a, a chord, if this has resonated, if this has given you some aha moments, I would, I would really appreciate if you would forward this to somebody who needs it. If you're not sure who needs it, post it on your Facebook, share it on your Instagram story, Because I can guarantee you there's somebody out there, somebody that you know who needs this information, somebody who's been secretly struggling behind closed doors or in silence and needs this information. Maybe it's just the resource. Maybe it's the, they can go out and purchase the book that I mentioned earlier and can start understanding this stuff at a deeper level, a theoretical level to then apply it in application in the real world so they can actually finally make a change. So if you've enjoyed it, If you got something out of this podcast, please do the right thing and pay it forward to somebody else who might need this information as well. It's the only way I can help get this info out there and also grow the podcast. So for you guys who are regulars, you know what to do. Pay the fee and help a friend, help a family member, help somebody else who needs it.
Thanks for listening, guys. I'll speak to you soon for another episode. Until then, make sure your behaviors line up with the goals you have. If you loved the wake-up call, found it entertaining, or got some benefit out of listening, I would appreciate you helping me to spread the word. Please share it with a friend or on social media so that you can pay it forward and give someone else the opportunity to improve themselves like you just have. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon for another episode.